show. We are back in the studio with uh, John Champion at Roddenberry Studios, and uh, we're doing some reaction commentary um, to the podcast called Power, the Hugh Hefner Story. It's very similar, again, to the type of narrative that the A&E docuseries is doing, so we are going to discuss it, and let's get into it. You, you kind of wonder, like, as soon as the A&E thing starts and there's a lot of publicity, because I heard people talking about it, you know, middle of last year, oh, this thing is coming, this thing is All coming. All excited. You know, then did, did somebody, uh, you know, were they just ready to go with a podcast? Like, ooh, ooh now's our time yeah. to, uh, to get this thing out Yeah, there and anymore. actually, her, this podcast mm -hmm. came out in January, so it came out before A&E, yeah. but obviously... Yeah, she was yeah. aware. So I'm going to go ahead and read uh, the show notes so sure. um, we can get an idea of what we're going to be talking about. Um, and anybody watching live, I, I can't answer questions or anything, so hi to everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, so when the party's over, Hefner retreats into his fake perfect life in the Playboy Mansion. I cannot stand how she said that. <laughs> fake perfect life. That was There's a lot to unpack already right. there. Yeah, okay. Right, right. Hoping yeah. to escape problems in his business empire and the fallout from the murder of star playmate Dorothy Stratton, which was one of the most devastating moments mm -hmm. in Playboy's history. He calls on his daughter, Christy Hefner, to turn things around. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, uh, should we just start unpacking that first line? Yeah, please. <laughs> <Because>. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, all right, before we actually do that, I mean, that this is another place where... Like, disclaimer, I feel like, please. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but first of all, some historical context, but also the disclaimer. Um, there are some things... I, I don't claim to speak for anyone who was there at the no. time. And again, I, I don't want to uh, negate somebody's personal experience. Uh, because uh, who knows, yeah. Yeah, you know, particularly in that last one about uh, Bobby Arnstein yeah. um, and the person who was telling his particular lived experience, his story, can't take away from that. We're going to try to just present some other ways to think about these stories. I you, think that's yeah. the way to, to yeah. approach it. Right. Yeah. And with that said, and I don't have shared mm -hmm. this with you already, that Karina and I are, were in total agreement that um, when doing these reaction pieces um, in light of the A&E thing coming out that mm -hmm. by no uh, means are we attacking anybody that is in yeah. the show. What we have a problem with is the group of female producers behind it. And, and that's what yeah. we're talking to. And, and we're addressing that to Alexandra Dean and Amy Rose Spiegel, who is the one that did this podcast. So there's a lack of counter narrative. Yes. And it's unfortunate because so many people who could provide that counter narrative are out there. They're, they're, oh. they're ready to be spoken the, to. You know. Actually, yeah. we were just talking about Allison. So yeah. Alexandra Dean spent mm -hmm. 48 hours at her house interviewing her and Joel. And Allison shared everything with them, all of the archives of her photographs wow. and, and her, you know, yeah. decades long, very, very, very close personal relationship with Hefner. Yeah. Um, and they put one minute of her in the entire season. Wow. What does that wow. say? Incredible. Is that ridiculous? Incredible. Yeah. Bizarre. Yeah. I, it, that That's the most frustrating part about all of this yeah. it, it, is, again, I look, do your journalistic due diligence. If there are salacious stories to be uh, dug up, OK, so be it. But you you absolutely need to do the work of finding the other people who were there. Again, literally, this is not ancient history. We're no. talking about people who are alive. It's all out there, too. <laughs> who were there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who can say, like, no, 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 this didn't happen i i did not see that happen and you know? they're not interested in that narrative and it's very yeah. clear yeah that's extremely frustrating yeah. um so that that's what we'll try to do is have at least a little bit of a counter story to Absolutely. what's going on here and um yeah historically you know this is looking at a, a pretty wide period so you're talking about 1980 uh which is when dorothy stratton was killed right and, and when christy hefner stepped in as ceo i think it's 1981 uh, was it that early? Because I, I, I know that she was an intern, uh, like late seventies, and I thought it was. Oh, then maybe she was still maybe interning. Five eighty six. Yeah. Okay. She became president and then yeah. CEO later. Yeah. So around that time, so we're talking about kind of a, a swath of time here from the late seventies to the mid to late eighties, and um, <laughs> I think 
<laughs> this, you, you, and I, you and I have the same reaction. Uh, Hefner retreats into his fake perfect, perfect life, life in the Playboy Mansion. Okay. Uh, that, that sounds like a lot of contempt. Like she's jealous that she never went to the mansion or something sure. because it's not fake and it was a perfect life. <laughs> Choice of words. Choice of words. No kind kidding. Of funny. Um, what life is fake? I don't know. Uh, you, you live your life and I think we all try to kind of carve out the existence that we want. Right. It, you know, right. so we, we shape our lives around what we want. <laughs> Hefner happened to have a lot of resources to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it, he, he actually lived it. And up and, and rightfully know. so. Who wouldn't live like that? Yeah. He had the ability to do so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, well, you know, perfect is kind of a loaded term because... Because nobody's life is perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect life. Nope. Uh, we certainly, I mean, gosh, today in social media land, we present a Everything curated image yeah. to the world, you know. But the thing about Hef, though, is that being a public figure, his life for the ups and downs were on full public display. Mm -hmm. So whether it was, you know, relationship issues or business issues mm -hmm. or something horrendously tragic. We talked about Bobby Arnstein's suicide. Now we're talking about a murder uh, for somebody who was very well liked and very well cared for. Um, I... You know, again, this is before my time there, but there are many people that I knew at the magazine and who I dealt with on a regular basis at the magazine who knew Dorothy yep. and really cared about her. Absolutely. And 20 years later, you know, 15 years later, whatever, were still so disturbed and upset and, and heartfelt. I mean, it, yeah, her, you know? it was it was absolutely one of the most tragic episodes that that you know have ever occurred in, in anybody's lifetime that was a part of that and surrounded by that and then you know that movie star 80 mm -hmm. and that really put into context you know that yeah. was the reality of what happened to her yeah. and and hef knew from the second that he met dorothy and her husband he knew right away that her husband was bad news yeah and he did, and he made sure that she had extra protection when she was going on promotions, when she was yeah. traveling, doing anything, because he was fearful that he was going to do something to her. Yeah. Um, if you want to have a really interesting read, if you go online and look at the newspaper articles from the time, and there were some investigative pieces done at the time, very shortly after her murder. And I want to say, like... Village Voice or something like that. Yeah, you know, definitely look that up. Very extensive piece about that to really paint the picture of who she was, who Paul Schneider was, the toxicity of their relationship. Right. And, you know, for better or for worse, um, you know, you've probably been in a relationship before where some outside voice said like, oh, you shouldn't be there. Or you shouldn't do this. Or of whatever. course. Yeah. And it's really easy to reject that, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Um and you can imagine that that creates tension or, or exacerbates the tension no matter what. Um, there were a lot of people at Playboy who cared very deeply about Dorothy and mm -hmm. saw that kind of vulnerability mm -hmm. and saw the toxicity of that mm -hmm. relationship. Like you just said, they went to the extent of on promotional tours and elsewhere trying to separate that tension as much as they could. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just can't because mm -hmm. you're getting in the middle of two people who have their own relationship, have mm -hmm. their own history. Mm -hmm. So, and and that's actually an interesting um, topic because, you know, any playmate that came in and and you were um, approved to be a playmate, mm -hmm. most of the time they had a boyfriend at the time or a husband sure. or whatever. And I would say 99% of the time, the husbands and the partners were not into it. And it would be the ultimate demise of your relationship. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's understandable. Yeah. You know, that happens. Um, unfortunately, you know, Dorothy Stratton's, what, what's her, what was her husband's name? Uh, Paul Schneider. Paul Schneider yeah. took it, you know, yeah. to the extent. Yeah. Um, but it was it was so heartbreaking to have it was mm -hmm. so heartbreaking to the entire playboy family mm -hmm. and when that occurred um half made a rule that he didn't want boyfriends and yeah. and partners coming up to the mansion because 
that happened. Right, which is going to be its own problem as well. And, yeah. And, you know, I, but I guess... But but th but with that said, I will back it up with it wasn't a hard no to everybody. Sure. But if, it, like, if he knew that you were engaged and, you know, you had, like, a functioning relationship, yeah, by all right. means, bring your husband. Right. But if you're just right. having to be dating some dude, he's, he was not going to let you just come up to the mansion. Okay. You know, sense. I mean, yeah, and it, that's it is his correct. house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he can decide. Right, you know? and that's the other thing. It's like you can, you could pick out all kinds of personality quirks, uh, strange behaviors, whatever, and say, well, I wouldn't necessarily live my life like that, or I, I wouldn't have these particular sets of rules at my house, whatever. You're also probably not, you know, a gazillionaire public figure in exactly. the way that Hef was. Um, they can't compare, and that's what people don't seem to understand, is yeah, that, like, yeah. Hef had a very unique lifestyle. And under a microscope. And under a microscope. Lifestyle. And so how he lived his life and, 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 and the protection around it and, you know, whatever he deemed was the way, whatever he deemed necessary, that was the most effective way for him to live his life how he wanted to, he did so. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It was yeah. the American dream, like you said. Yeah. I mean, he, he got to live his life the way that he wanted to. Right. And and here's what's strange. It's like from the outside, you could look at that and go, oh, hey, these are weird rules or yeah. weird behaviors, whatever. Uh, okay, fine. Absolutely. To you, they might be. Yeah, yeah. I think what's strange is taking it a step further and to have this sort of uh, hyper-moralistic yeah. attitude toward it and and that's coming back to our opening sentence here it's like the level the level of judgment right away it just sort of that automatically yes. yeah. shows your hand yeah to, exactly to the audience that's you know? exactly what i thought um, yeah he, he could have a peculiar life he could have a, a very extraordinary life a very atypical life like all of these things apply yeah. that's yeah. fine but to then take that and say, oh, no, no, but, but all of that is wrong because it was weird, because it was right. out of step. And know? then what they do is then they say, oh, all of these, not all of these playmates, but there are a handful of playmates that committed suicide. Um, and, and then Dorothy Stratton was murdered. Yeah. And they then blame it on Playboy and Hugh Hefner. Yeah. And that is wrong. That yeah. has nothing to do with Playboy. I, I know that the late uh, Peter Bogdan Bogdanovich, he just passed away not that That's long right. ago. That's right, he you did, know, he, yeah. Uh, he had a relationship with Dorothy. Uh, he also was devastated by the whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah. He ended up marrying her Her sister. sister. Yeah, her younger sister. And he held this against Hef. Right. For the entirety of the remainder of their lives. Right, and that was another heartbreak for him. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and I think what's so strange about all of that is, is that, yeah, we always want to look for a single source of the blame. Yeah. We always want to look for, like, oh, well, if this hadn't caused that, then, then that's what would have been. It's like looking at the Titanic. Right. Go, right okay, <laughs> if only they had the binoculars, right. they wouldn't have hit the ice. Well, you don't know. Yeah. It's a series of things Woulda, that go wrong. Shudder, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, again, you can point to Playboy, you could point to the mansion, you could point to Happy, you could say, this is very out of the ordinary. But what is a lot harder to do is say, oh, okay, we're going to draw a straight line that says the line of blame for this particular bad act goes here. Exactly. I think that's very inappropriate. If it's you, highly, yeah. it, 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 it's, um, it's, yes, inappropriate. It's dangerous. Sure. And yeah. it's, it's immoral, in my yeah. opinion. If you were to look at any industry, any group of people that is big enough, you find the same tragedies and heartbreak Absolutely. within that. You just mentioned there are playmates who have committed suicide. You and I probably both went to high school with people who also committed suicide. Exactly. And from whatever walk of life, mm -hmm. might have been wealthy, might have mm -hmm. been poor, might have walked into yeah. uh, you know, a, a great job or not, but whatever, those tragic, horrible things happen. And when something is sensational and out of the ordinary for usual experience, like Playboy, mm -hmm. that then becomes the target. Mm -hmm. Just like we talked about with Bobby Arnstein and the whole mm -hmm. drug mm -hmm. debacle, you know, it, it, it's, I, I, I wonder what it is that we tend to just look for the most 
obvious sort of low-hanging fruit answer that, well, if we just got rid of this, if we just got rid of Playboy or just got rid of that Hugh Hefner's uh, unsavory lifestyle, then that would solve these problems. And that would, that, that would answer why these people yeah. died or why this person was on drugs or whatever. And it's not the case. It I simply mean, I mean, isn't. Well, yeah. Why do you think that occurs? I mean, do you think that's just human nature or do you think it's a, a breakdown in our society of well, a lack of knowledge? or psychology cast with <laughs> Echo and John. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know? It's like, no, yeah, like, yeah. honestly, like yeah. Karina even said, she goes, you know, we have to talk about like, you know, perhaps these women are mentally ill, mm. meaning um, the producers who are doing this. And then the women who committed suicide. They, there's mental issues there, obviously. Yeah. Mental health issues there. Yeah, yeah. You know? And it's like, that should be the context of the conversation. Not, oh, because it was Playboy, then they, yeah. you know? I, I mean, how many people who work on Wall Street have committed suicide? So many. How many? Yeah. So, again, I think it's wrong to point to an industry or a lifestyle or something and says, like, oh, no, 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 that, that's... That's the problem yeah. is what they're doing. Well, no, m mental illness runs deep right. and it's very widespread. Right. And there might be certain conditions that could quell or exacerbate that either way. But that one thing you want to point to isn't the cause. It isn't the, the root reason for that right. behavior. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not the root reason. I think that Playboy has... From the beginning, it has always suffered from this misunderstanding. Yeah. Primarily from people who... Were on the outside who have, did, yeah. Have not read it, have not bothered to look into the people who were there, have not bothered to really kind of do the homework. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to come on your show and paint this rosy picture and say that everybody did everything right, because I don't think that's the case no, either. No, of course it's not. But I do think that... Playboy, just by being a very big target, it's easy to attract a lot of that negative commentary. Mm -hmm. It's easy to attract mm -hmm. a lot of that uh, criticism, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and then, unfortunately, the good stuff does get overshadowed mm -hmm. because all the good stuff, it gets tempered with, you know, oh, well, they were just doing that to hide all this negative stuff. Well, no, you know, there, there could be heartfelt good reasons yeah. for doing what they did, whether it's the philanthropic work right. or some of the really intensely important editorial work that right. happened there. Right. Um, and, and, and I don't want to downplay the side of it that was about sexual liberation. It, yeah, exactly. You know? right. Because I think that's still, here we are in the 21st century, <laughs> and it's still the sensationalistic, right? Uh, it, that that's the part of it that gets all the attention. Oh, yep, the sensationalizing. Yeah, yeah. it's like oh, if, if they just weren't living this libidinous lifestyle, mm -hmm. then these terrible things wouldn't have. Yeah, happened. it was just so tragic to be attached yeah. to Playboy because your life was going to be right. ruined by it, and it's just. It's it's not the case. It's just yeah. I would have thought that we would be beyond that by now. It's, exactly. You know? <laughs> I mean, and right. exactly, and and that's yeah. the perfect point. It's just like again, it's like, you know, at what point are people going to take it upon themselves to? I mean, just educate yourself or be interested in learning about whatever it is before you you know construct this personal opinion or perspective. Without knowing anything about it, yeah, you just you, you're 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 you know you're you're speaking, not speaking. You're you're. Uh, I just went brain dead. <laughs> so we, anyway. we all do. That's why I have to anyway. put the mic in front of us. Yeah. yeah, but you know, Hef was the person above all else who said, "My life is a Rorschach test," and you show his life to one person, they have one reaction, you show it to a hundred other people. And, and they're they going to have a different, different reaction. Yeah. You know? yeah. And part of it was this advocacy for, uh, you know, an embrace and an interest and curiosity about the, the scope of human sexuality, uh -huh. which simply came from a generation that did not right. express and discuss those things. Right. Um, uh, up to, you know, just the sheer fact that he was a man who had these very unconventional relationships. 
So what? So what? Who cares? Yeah. He could do it. Yeah. And I have no problem yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, the, the fact is that he did and... Uh, and or, and yeah, yeah, and he had no and he um had no shame in it. Yeah. It was because he was an open person in every sense of the way. And yeah. you know, I think it's a okay to sexually explore. I think yeah. it's important. Yeah, yeah. So it it is I, you've said it a million times before, but the, the biggest problem out of all of this is that everything is being said after he could defend himself. Posthumous, and that's bad. Yeah, and there are so many examples, like the Bobby Arnstein incident, like so many others, where Hef would be the first in line to say, like, no, 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 here is the statement. Here is mm -hmm. here's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate that he appreciated that he got it wrong sometimes. Of course. So there is... I can't remember if it was in the Amazon series or it might have been in the Toshin books that he collaborated on. And, and he said of his appearance on the Dick Cavett show when he was <laughs> he was really being taken to task. I by, yeah, I actually just watched that on YouTube last yeah. week and it was I was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and look, you know, I think half for any editors at the magazine at the time would say, we need to have this discussion about feminism and Playboy's perception or role in that. That is a conversation we need to have head on. Mm -hmm. um, things, the feminist movement changed many times between the early 60s, late 60s, and into the 70s when that Dick Cavett clip played. But Heff was the one who said, like, I went on that show and I didn't have the words mm -hmm. to be able to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he knew. Mm -hmm. he, he knew that he was not equipped to do that. Give it time. Let's take, you know, a little bit of a separation of distance and see if we can come back and have that conversation. Correct. But now he's gone. Right. And he can't. Right. And that's but thank God there's all the documentation again out there <laughs> in the archives. <laughs> so right, 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 everything right. that we're talking about can be found, people, and, and it will be out of the mouth of half. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, it, an interesting thing about the show notes in that episode that uh, of the Power Podcast is, is that you know, all right, we we already made light of their their strange <laughs> choice of words. Yeah. At the beginning. I think that's totally fair, you know. But they talk about uh, Christy Hefner coming into the company, and and I, if I have it right, I think it was the late mid to late seventies that she came on as an intern, then came back as president right. later, and that was right around that time where. Yeah, the business landscape of Playboy is changing yeah. quite a bit. And I mentioned before in an episode with you, you know, the Mies Commission uh, under the Reagan administration, that was also putting the clamp down on being able to find a magazine like Playboy on a local newsstand, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So the whole landscape was changing quite a bit. The club's we're yeah. going to be gone by yeah. 86. Yeah, because they were, I mean, it was, they were bleeding yeah. money, you yeah. know, yeah. and, and, and that was a really great transition. I mean, that was a really wonderful thing um, that not only did, uh, was Christy very interested in following in her father's footsteps yeah. and, um, and stepped into that role and did a, a really great job for a couple decades. Oh, you 100%. Know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, she she was definitely the right person to take it on at that time. And it was time for Hef to, to pull back from the day to day operations yeah. and focus solely on the magazine. And that's what he did. He then, you know, at the mansion yeah. from front cover to back cover, right down to the font placement, everything, people. Yeah. Hef. <laughs> was that i mean he yeah. he looked at every single little aspect and approved it yes or no and that it was at that time that he then got to focus on the magazine and christy stepped in and ran the company you can kind of look back at some of those important moments in the business history of playboy whether it was the uh the closing of the london club right. originally because they went that there was a whole other that's story. a whole lot yeah oh, we're yeah. actually going to talk about that on second season good good yeah. good and then uh the atlantic city casino and that that was a whole other thing and yeah. all these were were devastating in a business sense yeah to the the whole playboy they had empire. to restructure like yeah. any corporate entity yeah yeah right. and then and you need somebody 
strong and thoughtful like Christy to come in exactly. and say, okay, it's time to clean house. Exactly. Um, there's always the woulda, coulda, shoulda, uh, based on those old decisions and those old incidents. Ooh, what if they had survived this particular incident? No, I think I think it manifested but, how it should, exactly. you know, and I have so much respect for Christy. She's an incredible human being. And, you know, I Same. had, uh, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I was fortunate enough to have some really um, intimate one-on-ones with her, you know, I right. threw letters and I, yeah. I, I suggested uh, setting up a scholarship fund for playmates mm -hmm. that want to go to college mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she set it up and wow. um, she loved the idea. Um, and then the whole dot com thing, again, yeah. that was something that, that we had um, um, went back and forth on. And I, I, I really, really enjoyed those brief moments of being able to speak to her sure. and yeah. and to and to get her feedback and then for her to approve something like that yeah. you know she was remarkable very cool yeah very cool. yeah i mean that, that's the thing about i think everybody who you encountered in your dealings with the magazine or anybody after that now that you're doing the podcast in my experience too i never met anybody who didn't really care about the job that they were doing yeah you know, they, that's they, very true yeah. like you were there and you loved it yeah. and, and that's why people stayed for 30 40 55 right, years right you know they all felt the importance yeah it, yeah know? like and we yeah. were we were all valuable each and every single one of playboy employees and mm -hmm. staff were valuable and yeah. have made sure that you knew that yeah you know and that's a special thing. And, and we are a very, very small group of people that had that opportunity to go on this journey with Playboy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so grateful. I, I keep hoping that this current wave will pass. Me too. <laughs> um, Me too. It, like that. This is our plan, people. Like this yeah. is Karina and I are here to cancel the cancel culture movement. <laughs> it's time to go. Right. Well, and you know, I, I never want to be too precious about the past. I never want to be too precious about um, our memories. Things deserve examination. Absolutely. That's something that the magazine editorially was great about. It, it was sort of getting rid of the sacred cows and deciding these are the things that need to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Now we are we need to sort of swing the conversation back to the middle yep. instead of the extreme. I agree. Um, and you know, again, it can't be overstated the the people who were there who can actually speak to it mm -hmm. and say no uh, they they they've got this story wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. need yeah. to come out and it, it's it just makes my heart so happy to see the response um, of of everybody of we stand with Hef you know mm -hmm. and um, you know right when the A uh, and A and E series. Uh, aired um kimberly hefner was the one um, who spearheaded mm -hmm. writing the letter and support of yeah. hef and his character and and you know that was a wonderful thing and thank you kimberly hefner for doing that nice yeah, yeah. so um yeah what else on that <laughs> show <laughs> that's about it <laughs> we, we summed up the uh, the uh, the initial um uh, context of the way that she uh worded it and yeah you can tell it's a little bit of contempt there but again um you know if you want to listen to it listen to it but just know you know that um there is a different narrative that is honest and factual and authentic and true and you know we're just here to share that with you and and the everybody from playboy the world of playboy is and there will be a lot more people coming on our show from Good. playboy and you know friends and family and staff members and we're just going to keep this going and i think i think we are a large enough force to be reckoned with and i think people are going to hear us i mean look we we are in a media environment where it's relatively easy to put stuff out there, whether it's a podcast right. or a, a video documentary or anything. And there's no stopping a one-sided narrative. Mm -mm. Uh, but the best thing that can be done is to counter that speech with more speech exactly. and, and just be able to say like, hey, that wasn't my experience or my understanding or 
any of the history that I've heard mm -hmm. uh, with anybody there. Right. Yeah. And and then not to mention so many firsthand accounts that, you know, people are coming in and going, oh, no, actually, I was there. Yeah. And then this is actually yeah, what yeah, did yeah, happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm just so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for this Playboy family. It has been so fun to reunite with everybody, John. Sure. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like it's food for the soul. And, yeah. you know, it's like you were saying. I mean, we worked with the most incredible people, yeah. talented Absolutely. interesting you know yeah. i mean just really really an amazing experience yeah. for all of us and, and people again can't be overstated people who cared yes who really, deeply. really cared deeply about their jobs yeah. and, and about the uh the impact and importance of the words that were on those pages yeah getting out there to the yeah. world it was a yeah. living breathing mm -hmm. brand and we were all a part of it you yeah. know yeah indeed mm -hmm. So that wraps up that reaction <laughs> <laughs> to, I don't even know what, what show number that was, but that's what we have to say on that. So, um, all right, well, we're going to wrap up the show here. John, thank you so much. Thank you. It has My been pleasure. a yeah. pleasure to go down uh, history lane with you. I look forward to all the other shows because I want to hear what everybody else has to say. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. exactly. And so in the interim, um, as I as I told you and now telling the listeners, um, while Karina is recovering and going through radiation, we are going to have a rotating guest host come in. We're going to have a couple nice. of different planes mates and um, some Playboy staff and we are going to be doing a lot of this type of context until we go into season two which will be starting in May. All right. Okay. Do you want to um, do you want to plug anything? Oh or? hey uh, podcast.roddenberry.com. If you, you want to nerd out come yeah. <laughs> come check us out there. <laughs> if you want to nerd out go. Yes. Okay and then just a reminder to everybody to um uh, obviously, we have our social media handles, um, our YouTube channel. Please follow that. Uh, smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And thebunnychronicles.com has everything you need to know about everything that we're doing. Uh, we also have memorabilia and merch and a bunch of stuff on there. And we're getting ready to premiere our very first NFT collection coming soon. All right. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>